Okay, good morning. Let's start in child's pose today. So, and I'll give you two options, um, especially since there's some talk of uh, lower back. For lower back, sometimes it's nice to do child's pose with the knees and the feet all the way together because it helps you spread the lower back a little bit more. If, if you're not feeling that, you could just bring big toes together, knees apart, and you can play with the distance of the knees. So if, if you have any anything going on with the lower back, you don't want the knees so far apart that your torso can fit all the way between the thighs. So keep them um, somewhat close enough together so that you can rest the uh, rib cage on the thighs. And maybe you start with one and then see how that feels. So big toes together, knees slightly apart so that the rib cage is the sides of the rib cage are still resting on the thighs, bring the forehead down and then see if that's giving you some space and freedom in the back. And if it's not, then you can try bringing the knees closer together, or maybe you bring them the knees and the feet all the way together and come back into it that way. So experiment, you have some time here to settle in, bringing the forehead down, eyes either softly open or closed. And once you find your child's pose, you can start with the arms down on the mat. So instead of stretching the fingertips as far forward as you can, maybe the elbows come down, the forearms come down. And the hips start to go back toward the heels, but you want to listen to the knees. If they're talking to you, then lift the hips up a little bit higher until you can get them quiet. And it's really up to you how high the hips go. They can be up pretty high if that's what the knees need. You can always put something behind the knees too. That also gives you a little bit more space there. So take a deeper breath in through the nose, back out through the nose, nice and slow. Two more like that. Big breath in. Feel the whole back move. And slow exhale. Let it go. One more like that. Keep going with this breath on your own. And as you're deepening the breath, finding your breath rhythm of your practice, you'll start to feel the back move with the breath. And what's kind of nice is when you take those breaths in and out, especially in trying to spread the back as much as you can, maybe getting in, into those areas that might be a little tight or have a little extra stress. And without force, just a gentle nourishing intention with that area of the body. If you're starting to feel a little bit more open, you could crawl the fingertips forward. Maybe the forearms and the elbows start to lift away from the mat. Only if that feels good. If you're feeling better with the elbows down, that's fine. But we are trying to get a little bit more length in our child's pose. You can start to move the head side to side a little bit. So that part on the forehead that's touching the mat, when you go side to side, it's really soothing, calming. It's always a nice way to come into your practice. You're already bowing to the mat. Now you're kind of just rubbing in the forehead. And feeling that physical connection to your mat. You'll come back to center. Let's come up to hands and knees. So tabletop. So if the knees were all the way together, separate them. So they're hip width distance apart and either turn the hands out so that the fingertips point toward the sides of the mat, or if there's enough mobility in the wrist, you could turn the hands all the way around. So the fingertips point toward the knees. And if this is the case, stack the shoulders over the heels of the hands. And we'll do cat cow, opening up the wrists and the forearms as well. Inhale, reach the heart forward, lift the tail and exhale round the whole spine, chin in toward the chest. 
Inhale, reach the heart forward. Exhale, round. Keep going on your own. You know you can add movement. You can even take away movement. So if you feel like there's a spot that needs a pause and you just want to breathe there, you're welcome to do that. Then however the hands are, make sure the fingers are spread evenly. And then you're pressing down into the whole hand. So fingertips, circumference of the palm. One more cycle, forward and back. And you'll come back to neutral. If you have the hands turned in a different direction, bring them back forward so the fingertips point toward the top of the mat. And then from here, tuck the toes underneath you, bring the knees and the feet all the way together. We'll play with the toe tuck. Uh, you'll take this in stages. So you can start to walk the hands back. And if you feel like, whoa, my feet are getting a big stretch and my hands are still on the mat, you can stay right here. You don't need to come all the way up. But if you feel like you can sit back onto the heels, make sure the fourth and fifth toe are going straight forward. You can sit back onto the heels, lift the chest, rest the hands on the thighs, and you're putting some weight on the feet to stretch them. So that can get intense pretty quickly for a lot of us. You know, you can always come forward and bring your hands to the mat or even blocks if you have them. Sit up nice and tall, lifting up through the crown of the head, drawing the shoulders down the back so that you feel some length in the backside of the neck. And let's add a shoulder opening, reach the right arm all the way up bend that right arm and then grab for the elbow. And you're just working that right uh, hand down the back. Keep the head uh, lifted so that you're looking forward and you're not going down toward the chest with the chin. Same breath. Reach the arms all the way back up, bend the left arm, grab for the left elbow. Start to get into the left shoulder. Keeping that length in the spine without puffing out the chest too much. So you want to hug those lowest front ribs in, tone the belly. And then reach the arms all the way back up. Hands come back down to the mat, separate the knees, untuck the toes, and you can tap the tops of the feet on the mat, which should feel pretty good after that toe tuck. Good. And then walk the hands forward just so they're right underneath the shoulders, setting up for plank pose, step one foot back behind you and then the other. And this might feel pretty nice on the muscles in the legs after sitting the way that we were toes get a little bit, uh, still in a toe tuck, but a lot less weight on the feet, keep reaching the chest forward. So when you do that, you should feel like you get a little longer in the front side of the body. And then you're squeezing those inner thighs, almost like you're trying to spin a, if you had a block between the thighs, you're trying to spin it up toward the sky, hug those outer hips in outer thighs in tailbone points back navels going up through the sternum and you're using the whole hand again. So fingertips, circumference of the palms and lower all the way down to the mat slowly tops of the feet come to the mat. So press down into the tops of the feet. That'll be a nice stretch to reverse the toe tuck and then reach the arms back behind you lift and spread the shoulders, reaching the chest forward, squeezing those hands together and continuing to put some pressure into the tops of the feet. Then exhale, release, make a pillow with the hands, rest the head, turning it to one side. Then you can bring the feet up, move the feet side to side. Set the feet back down onto the mat, reach the arms back behind you, squeeze the hands together, lift the chest, but you're trying to stretch it forward at the same time. Feet still pressing down into the mat, so you get some energy into the legs. And slowly let that go on your next exhale. Pill with the hands, turn the head the other way, lift the feet, move them side to side. Only if that feels good on the lower back. Sometimes 
this doesn't release uh, the lower back for all of us. So if that's the case, you can always just leave the feet back down onto the mat. One last one, press into the tops of the feet, reach the arms back behind you, lift and spread the chest, tailbone points back toward the heels. Chest is nice and open and those bottom tips of the shoulder blades are pushing the chest forward. Keep squeezing the hands together and gently release, turn the head the other way, bend the legs, move the feet side to side. Then set the feet back down onto the mat, bring the hands down to the mat, come back to hands and knees, take a quick child's pose, big toes together. You decide how far apart you want the knees, rest the head on the mat and see if you can stretch the arms out in front of you. So keeping this a more active child's pose, pressing down into the whole hand, all 10 fingertips, whole circumference of the palms. And then widening across the shoulder blades. So you should feel like the arms are squeezing together and that width across the shoulder blades is happening at the same time. Now look forward at the hands, downward facing dog, shift forward onto the knees, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. So first downward facing dog, feel free to add any movement that feels good in your body. Now I mean pedaling out the feet, or maybe it means putting a deep bend in the knees. In fact, let's all do that. Put a deep bend in the knees. So you're lifting the heels, deep bend in the knees. You're pressing the torso back toward the thighs. And this lifts the hips up pretty high. It also gives you a ton of length in the spine. So you might need to hug those lowest front ribs in to make that happen. Shoulders still spreading across the back as you press down into the index finger thumb side of the hand. See if you can keep the knees deeply bent and lift the hips up higher. It's really tough to do that because the legs want to straighten to get the hips where you want them to be. Hug the belly in, slowly start to extend the heels down toward the mat. You can still keep as much of a bend as you want in the legs. We're just trying to lengthen the spine as much as we can in this first downward facing dog. Then from here, look forward at the uh, top of the mat, step that right foot through up between the hands, coming into a runner's lunge. So blocks underneath the hands, or maybe you just come up onto the fingertips, lifting the chest up a little bit higher. So you're stretching the heart forward and that left heel back, right knees right over the right ankle or behind it. Just avoid going ahead of it. Left hand comes down underneath the left shoulder, reach the right arm up for a twist. So left shoulder rolls down the back, moves it away from that left ear. Keep that energy in the left leg and the outer left hip as you hug the belly in to open up across the chest. Right knee still points forward. And if it's bowing out to the right, then widen the stance a little bit, move that right foot out to the right. Right hand comes back down to the mat, step back, downward facing dog, and we'll switch sides right away. Left foot steps up between the hands, runner's lunge, lifting the chest up a little bit higher. So that's hands on blocks, or maybe you just come up to the fingertips. Keep uh, stretching that right heel back, reach the chest forward, get really long in your lunge. right hand underneath the shoulder, left arm reaches up, hug the belly in to open up across the chest and try to keep the uh, right leg working all the way up through the hip. You'll feel the core twist to open up across the chest, left knee still pointing straight forward. Left hand comes down to the mat, step back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward, step or walk, bring the feet up between the hands. Forward fold at the top of the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale fold. 
two more like that. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Hug the belly in. Inhale up halfway. Reach the heart forward. Exhale, fold. This time, circle the arms out wide. Press yourself all the way up to standing. Bring the hands together down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold all the way back down. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, widen the feet so they're closer to, uh, they're definitely wider than hip width distance apart. They might be a little bit in from the outer edges of the mat, but we're just taking a wide, a wider forward fold. Clasp opposite elbows, hug the belly in. And then notice where the weight's falling in the, in the feet. We want the balls of the feet to be heavier than the heels of the feet. So you may need to shift forward a little bit. Nod the head yes a couple of times, no a couple of times. And as you hang onto the elbows, it's like you're pulling them down toward the mat. So you get that hanging upside down feeling in the back. Switch the clasp of the elbows, other form in front. Hands to the mat, heel toe the feet back to hip width distance, unless you practice with the feet closer. Plant the hands, bend the knees, step back to plank pose, lower all the way down to the mat slowly. Tops of the feet to the mat, setting up for cobra. Inhale up, so chest opens up, point the tailbone back. Exhale, release, downward facing dog, either hands and knees to get there or tuck the toes. Bring it back up to plank pose and then downward facing dog. So when you're plank, when you're lowering down and you're going up uh, from the ground up to plank, you want to try to keep the body in one line. If you're feeling like it's a big wave, then use the knees to get there. Bend the knees, look forward, step, walk, hop, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle the arms all the way up to standing. Bring the palms together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat, bend the knees, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga. You decide cobra or up dog. If you have any injuries, listen to them. See if one's feeling better than the other for your back bends. Take it back to downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward, step, walk, hop, feet up between the hands, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle the arms all the way up to standing. Bring the hands together, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga. Inhale up for your back bend. Exhale back, downward facing dog. One more Surya A, bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, bring the feet forward. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Inhale, circle the arms all the way up to standing, bring the hands together, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach up, exhale forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down on the exhale, chaturanga. 
Inhale up for your back bend. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Few breaths in your downward facing dog. Look forward, step the right foot up between the hands, back to that runner's lunge. But this time, bring the right hand inside the right foot and walk the hands over to the left. So you're turn turning to face the side of the mat. And then we'll bring the heels in and the toes out just a little bit. Bend the left leg, walk the hands over to the left leg and keep, stay high here. So the hips are pretty high. Soles of both feet are on the mat. So that right foot's down. So it's like a really gentle skandhasana. Chest is reaching forward and you're trying not to go too far forward onto the toes. So see if you can keep that left heel down. If you can't, then lift the hips up higher. And then come back to center, straightening the legs, point the toes straight forward or a little bit in with the legs straight, walk both hands over to the left leg. So maybe you can grab the leg, the foot, the ankle. If you can't, not a big deal. You're just reaching in that direction, folding. So opening up the back sides of the legs, also getting a nice stretch on the whole right side of the back. Come back to center. So bring the fingertips underneath the shoulders, lift yourself up halfway, put a bend in the knees, float the hands to the hips and come up to standing, still facing the side of the mat, angle in the left toes, turn the right toes all the way out, bring the right forearm to the right thigh, lift the left arm up. So side angle pose, left arms going up to the sky instead of over the head. And that right, what's nice about the connection between the right forearm and the right thigh is you can guide that knee. So it's going over the second and third toe. For a lot of us, that right knee wants to cave in and go left. Uh, yeah, go left of the big toe. And we want to keep it going straight forward. So that'll keep you a little bit more honest. You can stay like this with this left arm up, or maybe you turn the left palm to face behind you and wrap the left arm behind the back. So coming into a half bind, you want to keep both sides of the torso long here. So if you're taking away space, skip the half bind. And then being light with the upper body, straighten the front leg, bring that right hand down. It's a half bound triangle. So everything's the same, except for that front leg is straight and you're reaching that right hand down. It can rest lightly on the shin, the ankle, a block outside the calf. Then left arm releases, reach it up and over the head. So you're stretching the whole left side of the body, root down through that back leg and get longer in the right side of the torso. Bring the hands down to the mat, facing forward. You're gonna need to bend that right knee a little bit. Step back to plank pose, down dog or vinyasa. Left foot steps up between the hands. Find that runner's lunge. Bring the left hand inside the left foot. Walk the hands over to the right. Bend, uh, turn the toes out a little bit, heels in. Bend the right knee, straighten the left leg. Keep the fingertips underneath you, hips pretty high. You're reaching that chest forward, trying to keep both soles of the feet down on the mat. So right knee and right toes, are going in the same direction. That's really important. Come back to center, point the toes forward. You're still on your fingertips. Walk the hands over to the right leg. So both legs straight, let yourself fold over, reaching over toward the right leg. Hands come back to center, lift the chest up, bend the knees, float the hands to the hips, press yourself up to standing, angle on the right toes, turn the left toes all the way out, 
bend that left knee, left forearm, left thigh, right arm reaches straight up to the sky. And then find that connection between the left forearm and the left thigh, keeping that knee going straight forward over the second and third toe. And if you feel like all the weight is going into that front leg, root down through that right leg at the same time. Like you're trying to reach the foot through the floor, turn that right palm to face behind you. Maybe you take the half bind on this side, see how it feels. You can always skip it. See if you can get as long as possible in both sides of the torso. So it's easier to find it in the right side. Try to find it in the left. That's an adjustment with the chest and try not to puff out the chest too much. So you want to hug that belly in. Keep some weight in the back leg. As you straighten the front leg, left hand goes down. It's that half bound triangle. Right arm reaches up and over the head. So you root down through that right leg to reach up and over with the right arm. Keep opening up the chest. It wants to go down toward the mat. Then bend that front leg, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, vinyasa, down dog, you decide. We'll all meet in downward facing dog. Walk the hands back to the feet. So you're coming into a forward fold at the back of the mat. So feet hip width distance apart is uh, where we'll be. Bend the knees, reach the arms up. You're coming into chair pose. So feet hip width distance apart for this one. If you ever practice with the feet in a different place, bring the hands outside the thighs down by the knees, but they're on the thighs. And then at the same time, listen before you do it, hands press into the thighs, thighs press back into the hands as hard as you can. Feel how the core turns on, keep reaching the chest forward and up, and you should feel a lot of space in the lower back when you do this. So those legs are pressing into the hands, the hands are squeezing back into the legs, core is hugging in, chest is reaching forward, you're looking forward. See if you can keep this engagement in the legs, reach the arms forward and up. Totally different chair pose. Those legs are working so much harder. Press all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. We'll come back into chair pose, we won't hold it as long, but see if you can find the same quality chair. Bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Work those legs, feel how it affects the whole pose. Then exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Walk the hands forward, back to your downward facing dog. Right foot steps up between the hands. Runners lunge, right hand inside the right foot. Walk the hands over to the left. Toes out a little bit, bend the left knee, keep the hips high, both heels down, unless you really want to go for skandhasana, you could bring the hips lower, turn the right toes up. Back to center, toes point forward, walk both hands over to the left leg, find that stretch. Back to center, fingertips underneath the chest, lift the chest up, coming up halfway, bend the knees, hands to the hips, angle in the left toes, turn the right toes all the way out, right forearm, right thigh, left arm reaches straight up, side angle pose, Parjva Konasana. Stay here or take the half bind, turn that palm to face behind you, wrap the left arm behind the back. Straighten the front leg, right hand comes down, half bound triangle. Reach that left arm up, turn the palm to face forward and stretch the arm over the ear. Hands come down to the mat, step back to downward facing dog, 
hold dog or glide forward to plank pose, taking a vinyasa. Left foot steps up between the hands, runner's lunge. Left foot or left hand inside the left foot, walk the hands over to the right, heels in, toes out a little bit, bend the right leg, straighten the left. Keep the chest lifted as you reach forward, hips high, whatever you did on the first side. Back to center, turn the toes to point forward. They can even point in a little bit. Walk both hands over to the right leg. Let the head come down. Sometimes it wants to stay lifted. Back to center with the hands. Come up onto the fingertips. Lift yourself up halfway. Put a bend in the knees, hands to the hips. Press up to standing. Angle in the right toes. Turn the left toes out. Left forearm, left thigh. Reach the right arm straight up to the sky. Stay here for a side angle pose or take the half bind, turning that right arm back behind you, wrapping the arm behind the back. Be solid in that back leg. As you straighten the front leg, left hand comes down, chest revolves open. Right arm reaches up, turn the palm to face forward, reach the arm up and over the ear. Hands come down to the mat, step back, downward facing dog, hold it or take a vinyasa. Walk the hands back toward the feet, back of the mat, feet hip width distance apart, inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, chair pose, bend the knees, reach the arms up, weight in the heels, bring those hands outside of the thighs, down by the knees, but still on the thighs. Press the hands and the legs into one another as hard as you can, hug the belly in, keep reaching the chest forward, look in the direction you want the chest to go in, so that's forward or up, and then see if you can make any more space in the lower back because you're working the legs so much and the arms. Then keep the legs like this. Just reach the arms forward and up. Chair pose. Come all the way up to standing. Hands come together down in front of the heart. Same thing we did before. Without the hands, see if you can come back in that same chair. Inhale, sit back, reach the arms up. Keep working those legs as much as you can. Feel all that space go up through the spine. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway, walk the hands forward, back to downward facing dog. Right foot steps up between the hands, right hand inside the right foot, walk the hands over to the left, heels in, toes out, bend the left leg, straighten the right. Any version of Skandasana you want, maybe you go deeper this time, it's up to you. Hands down to the mat, turn the toes to point straight forward. Both hands go over toward the left leg. Back to center, come up onto the fingertips, bend the knees, hands to the hips, press yourself up to standing. Left toes angle in if they're not already, right toes angle out, right forearm, right thigh. Reach the left arm up, stay here for side angle pose or take the half bind, up to you. Get strong in both legs, start to straighten the front leg, right hand comes down, triangle pose. Left arm reaches up, turn the palm to face forward, stretch that left arm up and over. 
Hands come down to the mat, step back to downward facing dog, stay here for five breaths or work your way through a vinyasa with your breath. Left foot steps up between the hands, left hand inside the left foot, walk the hands over to the right, turn the toes. So heels in, toes out, bend the right knee, straighten the left, skandasana. Back to center, toes point forward, or maybe a little bit in, walk the hands over to the right leg. So both legs straight. Hands back to center, lift the chest up halfway, coming up onto the fingertips, bend the knees, hands to the hips, press up to standing, angle in the right toes, turn the left toes out. Left forearm, left thigh, right arm reaches straight up. And it's a really nice opening across the chest. Turn that right palm to face behind you, wrap the right arm behind the back if you're doing the half bind today. Straighten the front leg, left hand reaches down, keep opening up the chest. Right arm reaches up to the sky, turn that palm to face forward, stretch the arm over the ear. You'll feel that back leg really turn on. And then complete the circle. Right hand comes down to the mat, step back to downward facing dog. Stay here, vinyasa you choose. Walk the hands back toward the feet, back of the mat, feet hip width. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Without using the hands, find it with the legs and then work that engagement all the way up through those fingertips. Press up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Inhale, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway, walk the hands forward to downward facing dog. Little different this time, right foot steps up between the hands, bring the right hand inside the right foot, walk the hands over to the left. Heels in, toes out, skandasana, bend the left leg, straighten the right, keep the chest high. Back to straight legs, toes point straight forward, walk the hands over to the left leg. Back to center, lift the chest up high, put a bend in the knees, hands to the hips, press up to standing. Left toes angle in, right toes angle out, right forearm, right thigh, left arm reaches up. It can stay like this or half bind. So if you feel like your stance is long when we transition to triangle pose, you can straighten the front leg, heel toe the back foot in, reach that right arm down, open up across the chest. Then look down at that right foot. Bend that right knee, just like we did before. Reach the right fingertips forward ahead of the pinky toe. You're coming into a half bound, half moon. So shift the weight forward, press out through that left heel to lift the left leg. Right sit bone point straight back. And it's that outer tip of the left heel. That's the highest point of the left foot. Open up across the chest. Reach that left arm up. So if it's behind the back, you're coming into Ardha Chandrasana without the bind. Triangles are exit. Bend the standing leg, reach back with that left foot. Right arm down, left arm up. Turn that palm to face forward. Reach the arm up and over the ear. Hands come down to the mat, downward facing dog, with or without a vinyasa.
Same thing, other side. Left foot steps up between the hands, left hand inside the left foot, turn the toes to the right, heels in, toes out, bend the right leg, straighten the left, skandasana, high, low, wherever it's happening today is where you should be. Back to center, fingertips underneath the shoulders, turn the toes to point forward, both hands, right leg. Hands come back to center, lifting the chest up, coming up onto the fingertips, bend the knees, hands to the hips, rise up to standing, angle in the right toes, turn the left toes out. Left forearm, left thigh, right arm reaches straight up. Stay here or half bind. Turn that palm around, wrap the arm behind the back. Straighten the front leg, left arm down. Could shorten the stance a little bit for your triangle. Then look down at that left foot. Left outer hip needs to hug in a little bit. So if it's going out to the side, bring it in. Bend that left knee straight forward. Reach ahead of those pinky toes as far as you can, coming up onto the fingertips. And then shift the weight forward. Press out through that right heel. Hug the belly in. Open up across the chest. Half bound, half moon. Reach that right arm up, coming into your fullest expression of Ardha Chandrasana. And we'll step back to triangle pose. <laughs> Left arm down, right arm up. Turn the right palm to face forward and stretch the arm up and over the ear. Hands come down to the mat. Last vinyasa if you want it on the way to downward facing dog. And bring the knees down to the mat. Bring the feet over to one side, come to seated on the mat. So bring the legs out in front of you. You'll probably need to scoot yourself forward so the hips are in the center of the mat. And if you have a block, you can always do support a bridge, take the block back with you. Lie down onto your back, walk the feet in. So the feet are hip width distance apart, heels underneath the knees. You can grab onto the outer edges of the mat like you're going to rip the mat apart and you'll feel how the shoulder blades go underneath the chest to lift it. Press into the feet, lift the hips up. Maybe the shoulder blades go underneath you a little bit more and you dig down into the heels like you're going to slide them back to feel the backsides of the legs turn on. Interlace the fingers if the shoulders feel open enough or skip it and just hang onto the mat. Tailbone points up between the knees. That's what gives you the length in the lower back. And then you lift and spread the chest as much as you can, trying to lift those hip bones higher than the, the belly. And you'll slowly release, bring the hips back down to the mat. Just let that go for a couple of breaths. We're doing three rounds of back bend. So that was one. Moving into two, press into the feet, lift the hips up. Whatever arm variation is speaking to you today. And slowly release. Bring the hips back down to the mat, resting here. So back bends are so good for us, especially when the spine is aligned properly. Any rounding that's happening in the upper back, back bends reverse. So it's a good thing to keep in your practice on a regular basis. Press into the feet, lift the hips up, get those shoulder blades underneath you so you find that lifting and spreading of the chest. Keep the throat open so the chin's away from the chest. And slowly start to release, bring the hips back down, mat, letting that go. Keep the left foot on the mat, hug the right knee in toward the chest. So this is a nice way to gently release the lower back after back bends. 
hugging the knee in and keeping the opposite leg, that foot bent or that leg bent to so the foot on the mat. And then set that right foot down, bring the knees and feet all the way together, scoot the hips over to the right, bring the knees over to the left, right arm reaches outside the shoulder and you're coming into an easy spinal twist. If your lower back is not liking this, you can put a block or a pillow blanket, something between the knees to keep that space there. But that right hip, the top hip, it's moving away from you. And instead of tucking the tailbone, you point that out a little bit. Come back to center with the feet, feet on the mat, hug the left knee in toward the chest. Keep that right foot on the mat, helps you spread the lower back a little bit more. Then setting the left foot down onto the mat, scoot the hips over to the left, knees come over to the right. You can place something between the knees and the thighs, reach the left arm back behind you, and let maybe, if it's okay on the neck, you look over the left arm. If not, just look up. Eyes can be closed though. And then you'll take this left arm, bring it all the way over. So you're lying on your right side. Use the hands to bring yourself up to seated. And then once you come to seated, bring the sole of the right foot inside of the left leg. So like Janu Shirshasana. And then start to open the chest to point toward this right knee, the bent leg. You're up on the fingertips to keep the chest lifted. And those left toes are pointing straight up. So keeping the chest pointing this direction, look forward at the left toes, reach that left arm forward. It can either be on top of the leg. It can be inside the leg. If you want to go deeper, right arm reaches up and over. So now we're getting into that right side of the back. That right hip needs to be your anchor. So that's down on the mat as you reach up and over. Keep opening up the chest and you'll feel more length in the left side of the torso when you do that. And then slowly come back up the way we came in. So that right arm brings you back up. Chest is still going to be pointing toward the right knee. You're back up onto the fingertips, sitting up really tall, even on both sit bones. And then keep the legs, just revolve the chest forward. So you point the chest more toward the left toe. So it might feel like a twist a little bit. Reach the arms all the way up. And now you're folding forward over this left leg, coming into Janu Shirshasana. So let the hands touch something. It can be the mat, that leg, the foot, only if you can do it without uh, straightening the arms all the way. Let the head and the neck go. Head comes down toward the knee. And if you feel like the chest wants to open up to the right, make sure you keep it centered. So that's why we started with the chest pointing toward those left toes. So it should still feel like the chest is reaching toward the left toes. And start to walk the hands back in, coming back up to center. Use the hand to bring the right leg forward. And we'll do the other side. Left foot comes inside the right leg, sit up tall, coming up onto the fingertips and then start to revolve the chest open to the left. So the chest is pointing toward that left knee, sit up as tall as you can using both sit bones, 
keep the chest going in this direction. Just look at the right toes, bring that right arm forward, maybe on top of the leg, maybe inside the leg, left arm reaches up and over. So getting into that side body, keep opening the chest. Don't let it go down toward the mat, left hip on the mat as you reach away from it with the left arm. Left arm comes back up to center. Keep the chest opening up toward the left knee. Come back up onto the fingertips. Sitting up tall, keep this height in the spine as you start to revolve the chest forward. Fingertips out by the sides. Point the chest toward the right toes. Lift the arms all the way up. Take an inhale. Exhale, fold forward, reaching the heart over those toes and then rest the hands down. Let the head come down toward the knee, coming into Janu Shirshasana, head to knee pose. Start to release, use the hands to bring yourself back in. Left knee comes back to center, extend that left leg forward. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold, Paschimottanasana. I, I'm realizing another good cue for these seated forward folds are the hips. So if you feel like the hips are pointing back toward the back of the mat, you actually want them to be underneath you, or maybe even pointing forward toward the feet a little bit and then come into the fold. So that really helps too. If you're struggling with sciatica, that tilt of the hips makes a pretty big difference. You can aggravate it more. If you have the hips pointing back in these seated forward folds, propping yourself up on a blocks, nice too. It feels a little awkward at first, but particularly for a pose like this one, you get a little bit more of a stretch with the hips propped up. And you'll slowly come back up to seated and decide how you'd like to close your practice today on your back for Shavasana or staying upright, coming into a seated meditation, choose whichever one seems like it would give you a better day, start to work your way into it closing the eyes and we're all coming into stillness. So we just explored a ton of poses, moved our bodies in so many different ways, creating all these different shapes. Now we come into stillness and you can still feel the body absorbing the practice. Settle into that sensation. And do nothing else.
If you're in your seated meditation, stay there. If you're in Shavasana, start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Stretch the arms overhead, waking up again, getting really long on your mat. You can start to walk the feet in, bending the legs, rolling over to your right side, cradling the head and the arm. Use the hands to bring yourself up to your easy cross-legged seat, your meditation seat, however you're most comfortable. Eyes closed, sitting up tall. Bring the hands together in front of you. Maintain the lift of the chest as you bow the head, taking a moment to honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit, as well as everyone around you. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice and allowing me to guide you with yours. See you next time.